So here we are again to talk about the second biggest travesty in this game. You know one of those moments you have in certain games or some games when you see something that for the first time it almost takes your breath away at how bad it is. Okay, I'm going to try and keep me cool with this one. Uh, the amount of times I've had to put up with this and others have had this happen in the game and have rage quit in frustration. So this is a game that Bryzo, the developer, him and his crew have touted as historical and highly realistic representation of World War II combat. They recently updated the armour, they've made it better, but by God it falls far short of what it should and could be. Uh, the worst offender of what I'm talking about in this case, the Daimler armoured car. Let's make, make it clear that I believe all of the armoured cars should be re uh, removed from this game. The German ones included, though they're not anywhere near as bad as the Allied ones. They should all be removed. They have got no place in this game. It's already unrealistic enough with these empty spaces where the crew are supposed to be, who can only be injured by a direct hit from an AP round. You can't injure them with spalling or anything. So, what am I talking about here? We've all seen it. We've heard these described from a game years years old that we should have learnt the lesson from, or the developers should have learnt the lesson from it, where they were called the Clown Car. I think it might have been uh, Red Orchestra, and they were called Clown Cars because those that like to game the game would jump into these things and race around the battlefield at 60 miles an hour, driving in circles around German tanks, or if it was the other way around, around the Allied tanks, pumping rounds from their guns that would not have scratched the paint in real life, but because of hit points, which is this, this game has as part of its armour damage component, hit points, you hit the tank enough times and eventually you wear the ammo down until it blows up. Now, I can't understand how the developers are unable to get their heads around the reality that this game is practically dead. You've got at good times, peak times, when it's got the most people playing it, you're lucky to see over a thousand people playing it. If I was the developer, I'd be asking myself the obvious question. Why do so few people play my game? Why have we lost all our players? So the infantry combat, I don't really play it. And what I have played, it's a bit janky, it's a bit jerky, and I can see why people wouldn't be too keen on it. But I like to play the armour. I'm an armoured combat guy. World War II is my thing. And when this game, Proscription, first came out, the armour was an absolute travesty. They have improved it a lot, to be fair. You've now got components, as you can see. You can hit the components. But as I said, as I said in my last video, the glaring omission of the crew is in my opinion a deliberate cheat by the developers to keep the US market happy because American players they like to play American tanks and they don't want to get blown up like they did in real life they want to have a fighting chance well I we discussed all that in the previous video but this whole armoured car thing I, I can't get my head around it. I can't get my head around the fact that the developers must know there's a reason why people don't play the armoured vehicles in this game. You've got an ar what's called an armoured mode, where there's no infantry combat, it's purely armour. So tanks versus tanks, you'd like to think. And even though they've nerfed the German armour and buffed the Allied armour ridiculously, you can have fun in it until one of these things makes its appearance. So, typical situation, you're driving along in your King Tiger, the heaviest, most powerful German tank of World War II, with a turret on it at least, and then along comes one of these things, racing along at 60 miles an hour, or 40, somewhere between 40 and 60, grabbing air off of berms and ramps and muddy rises, flying through the air, crashing back to the ground, no harm to the suspension, no harm to the steering, and then it sees its prey, the German tank, the King Tiger, and starts tearing around it in circles, firing its gun constantly. 
wearing down the hit point armor until the King Tiger eventually blows up. <clears throat> Is it any wonder that so few people bother to play the armored mode in Postscriptum when they have to put up with this kind of travesty perpetrated by a lead developer, Bryzo, who clearly doesn't have a clue about anything to do with either historical accuracy or player retention. It, it really, I'm, it, I'm lost for words. I, I try to imagine myself being him, sitting at his desk, going to himself, why does nobody play my game? Why, why are so few people playing the game? Why is there only a thousand people playing the regular mode and a fraction of that bothering with the armour? Like literally a hundred people playing the armour. If that, if you're lucky. Why is that? I wonder why that... Well, I've, I've had the, the game's been out for like two years or two, year, two years plus. I can't work it out. Does he even play his own game? I wonder if he's ever tried playing the German tanks and had to put up with one of these disgusting travesties these arcade clown cars shredding the German tanks being operated not by passionate World War II armour aficionados but by cheap game gamers whose only interest is in winning the match at any cost historical accuracy be damned and look what they've been given by the developer with which to fulfill their sick desires. The clown car. These things need to be removed from the game. All of the armoured cars need to be removed from the game. If you're not going to implement them properly, if you're not going to make them killable by having a crew in that massive empty space between the tiny ammo boxes and the tiny engine and the tiny fuel tanks, I mean the amount of times I've hit one of these and clearly the shells just pass straight through the fighting compartment and out the other side. Of course it hasn't done any damage because there's no bloody crew in it, effectively. So remove them. Do everybody a big favour. You may actually see some players come back to the game once they find out that these disgusting travesties have been removed. But do it as an experiment, maybe. Remove the armoured cars from the armoured mode of this game. No, go further than that. Remove them entirely from the game. They have no place. If you're not going to implement them properly, then they have no place in the game. Remove them, take them away, and just leave the tanks. At least then the tankers might get a bit of semi-realistic action from the game that they paid for, with the promise it was going to be highly realistic and historically accurate. Right, I think I've made my point. Armoured cars need to be removed for the benefit of the game, the benefit of the players, and maybe for the benefit of the game's population. Thank you for listening. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye!